السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد السلام عليكم last time we started um, with uh, the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and his journey to meet the one who is more knowledgeable than him, Sayyidina Al-Khadir alayhi salam. And uh, when he asked uh, Sayyidina Al-Khadir to accompany him, Sayyidina Al-Khadir told him, you cannot, uh, you cannot be patient. You, uh, you, you, you don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, you are, uh, you have your own way and I have my own way. You might not understand what I'm going to do. So how can you have patience? And, and then Sayyidina Musa said to him, I am not going to ask you any question. So uh, I want to just to learn from you. I'm going to see what's going to happen and I'm not asking you any questions. So Sayyidina uh, Al-Khadr accepted that Sayyidina Musa will accompany him in their journey. And we saw that when they uh, went on the ship, Sayyidina Al-Khadr made a hole in it. He damaged the ship that uh, they used and that their owners were so generous, uh, they even did not take any money from them and he, uh, uh, in return to helping them uh, use their ship. Then we saw how uh, uh, they uh, proceeded with their journey and they met a boy and Al-Khadr killed him. And again, that was so not acceptable to Sayyidina Musa salam. And when he, when he told him uh, about it, he said, I told you, I told you that you can, uh, you can have no patience with me. Then the last thing that he promised, Sayyidina Musa promised him, if I ask you anything after this, keep me not in your company. So if I object to you anymore, that would be it. You have the permission just, um, uh, you have the excuse, that uh, to break this company. And this is when Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Rahmatullahi alayna wa ala Musa, law labitha ma'a sahibihi la absara al ajab. May Allah, may the mercy of Allah be upon us and upon Musa. If he had stayed with his companion, we would have seen wonders. So then uh, they went to, uh, on with their journey and uh, when they reached the town, they were so hungry, they, were, uh, they needed food and they asked all the people for, for food. They asked, they refused, they asked them for shelter, they refused. And uh, then uh, they were walking when they found a wall about to collapse. And Sayyidina Al-Khadr alayhi salam set it up straight. So Sayyidina Musa immediately said, if you, if you, if you have wished, surely you could have taken a payment uh, for, for, for what you did. And here Sayyidina Al-Khadr said, this is the parting between me and you. So that was it. But before we depart, I am going to tell you the reasons the interpretations of what happened. قال هذا فراق بيني وبينك سأنبئك بتأويل ما لم تستع عليه صبرا And this is Ayah 78. So I will tell you the interpretation, uh, the explanation of those things over which you were not able uh, to be patient. أما السفينة فكانت لمساكين يعملون في البحر. As for the boat, it belonged to poor people working in the sea. فأردت أن أعيبها. 
So I wish to make a defect, a, a defective damage in it. Why? وكان وراءه ملك يأخذ كل سفينة غصبا. As there was a king who was in front of them and who seized every good ship by force. Now, let's let's talk deeply about the ayah. So, a safina, the ship was for masakin. Masakin are What's the difference between al-miskin and al-faqir? Al-faqir, both of them are poor. But al-faqir is the one who does not own anything. And he is in need. While al-miskin is the one who owns a little bit, but what he owns is not sufficient for him. Okay, so those people, the owners, they were the owners of this boat, but they they did not have enough money to to to. to they did not have sufficient money. So what happened? They were working, working in the sea. So for someone who works in the sea, it means they uh, lift up uh, some goods, people, they fish, uh, they, they try to catch some pearls. So this is the type of work they used to do في البحر, يعملون في البحر. When he said, فأردت أن أعيبها, if we look at the verb فأردت, أردت means I wanted to cause a defect on it. But later, when he says, وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي We will come to that later, but I want to mention it here. <clears throat> he says, وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي So, he made the action, the, the bad action, refer back to him. أَرَدُّ I wanted. But later he said, وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي I did not do it by, by will. So Allah ordered me to do it, but that's of adab, that he, um, he caused the, made the bad action, the defect damage that he did, he made it just for himself, that he did that. وَكَانَ وَرَاءَهُمْ Now, what does the word وَرَاءَ means in the Qur'an? The word وَرَاءَ in the Qur'an has four different meanings. And this is the miracle of the Arabic language. One word will mean several different things that are not even related. How? So, in one of the <clears throat> places here, in one of the uh, ayahs, let's take this, this ayah. This ayah, وَرَاءَهُمْ means in front of them. So the king was at the shore waiting for them. And this is similar to Another ayah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مِنْ وَرَائِهِ جَهَنَّمْ Hell fire is in front of him. So the first meaning for wara'a, which, which is in this ayah and in other ayahs here, mean in front of them. Now, the other meaning. The other meaning for the word wara'a in Arabic is min badi, which is after. And we see this in um, the ayah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَامْرَأَتُهُ قَائِمَةٌ فَضَحِكَتْ فَبَشَّرْنَاهَا بِإِسْحَاقَ وَمِنْ وَرَاءِ إِسْحَاقَ يَعْقُوبٌ His wife was standing and she smiled. Then we gave her good tidings of Ishaq, 
that she is going to have Ishaq. And after Ishaq, Yaqub. She will have another child. So there will be a, another, another one after. وَمِنْ وَرَاءِ إِسْحَاقَ يَعْقُوبُ So after Ishaq, Yaqub will be there. Now, the, the third meaning is for the word wara'a is behind. فَنَبَذُوهُ وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِهِمْ They threw the scripture behind their backs. They did not care. So the word wara'a here means behind. And the last meaning for the word wara'a in the Quran means other than. فَمَنِ بْتَغَى which means غَيْرَ in Arabic. فَمَنِ بْتَغَى وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ If someone wanted something other than this, then those are the bad people, the transgressors. So here, if we look into this ayah, وَكَانَ وَرَاءَهُمْ مَلِكٌ يَأْخُذُ كُلَّ سَفِينَةٍ غَصْبًا so which, which one is better? When uh, Sayyidina al-Khadr said, I wanted to prevent that king from taking their boat by making it look faulty, by making it look defective. So he made a hole or he, he uh, broke a, a piece of wood or something. Now, what would the result be? Those poor owners, could benefit from their boat. So which one is better? To have a defective boat or to lose the boat by itself? So if Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam knew this explanation, he would have done the same thing to the fish, to, to the ship. He wouldn't think that this is something uh, strange, why did you do that? Why did you harm the people who benefited you? Why did you harm the people who helped you? So this is what the meaning, the explanation of why the, uh, Sayyidina al-Khadr made that hole or made that defect in the ship. Then he moved to the second case. وَأَمَّا الْغُلَامُ فَكَانَ أَبَوَاهُ مُؤْمِنَيْنِ فَخَشِينَا أَنْ يُرْهِقَهُمَا طُغْيَانًا وَكُفْرًا Now, as for the boy, his parents were believers. Now, look at the word الْغُلَام. الْغُلَام is a young boy who, who did not reach the age yet, so he is not ordered of doing the uh, uh, salawat and everything and uh, the takalif. So he is not punished for any uh, uh, anything. So when he dies at this age, then he, he dies uh, as pure as he, he would be. Now, is it good for the boy to die at this age or is it bad the mom and the dad were believers and most of the most of the time children are trials for their parents and this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the quran when he said إِنَّ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ وَأَوْلَادِكُمْ عَدُوٌّ لَكُمْ فَحْذَرُوهُمْ فَحْذَرُوهُمْ Indeed, among your wives and children are enemies to you. So be aware. How can a child be uh, an enemy? A child can be an enemy when, when he is so demanding and the, the parents are not rich, then the father would steal some, some money just to give the, uh, his child what he wants. 
So in this case, this child was a trial. And because of this child, the parent is going, the father is going to be punished. This is how the, the, the wives and children can be enemies. The same thing as for the wife. She would keep nagging and nagging and nagging for her husband. Get me this, get me that. My friend bought this ring. My, my friend got this car. Uh, look at this one, look at that one. And he is not able to do it. So what he will do, he will steal to fulfill the needs of his wife. So he is punished because of his wife who became his enemy. Now, Allah is saying, So this child, his parents were believers. And we feared that he would oppress, he would oppress them, he would overburden them by transgression and by disbelief. So out of their love to him, they will follow him. So it's a lose-lose case. And we intended that their Lord exchange them, substitute for them. Better than him. وأقرب رحمة better خيرا منه زكاة better than him in purity in, in righteousness and it's nearer to mercy for them so Allah سبحانه وتعالى when he made Al-Khadr عليه السلام kill this boy he, he transformed him from the kufr from the non-believing state that he will be when he will get older, which will lead to Jahannam. So he transferred him from this, from this position to, to killing him when he was young, when he was still pure, and he entered the Jannah. His parents rejoiced when he was born. And they grieved for him when he was killed. If he had stayed alive, he would have been the cause of their doom. So we have to look at things not from their, not outwardly, but look deeply. Within each and every calamity, there is some khair. What is the khair in what's happening? We might not understand it now, but later on, we will understand the reason. Most of the times, so, uh, someone would, would beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, and he would beg and beg and beg, and Allah, if it's destined he will give it to him but if not then he will not give it to him and later on he would say oh Allah did not give me this alhamdulillah it would have been a disaster if I got it so we never know what where is the khair and that's why when we want something we do not ask for it we ask for the khair we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say, Ya Allah, if you know there is khair in this thing that I would deeply want, just give it to me. If you know that there will be sharr in, what, in this, there will be some evil in this thing that I would deeply desire, then keep it away from me. And give me something that I would be content with and it will have all the khair for me. So outwardly, what happened to the ship and to the boy is, is not acceptable. But inwardly, it was all the khair. Now the third one, وَأَمَّا الْجِدَارُ فَكَانَ لِغُلَامَيْنِ يَتِيمَيْنِ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ 
as for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys in the town. وكان تحته كنز لهما. And under, and, uh, there was under this, this wall a treasure with them. It was a treasure for those, for those uh, young two uh, orphans. So you remember that the people of the city were all so stingy, were all so bad, that they refused to give them anything to eat. And under this, this wall, there was a treasure. So if this wall falls down and the treasure is shown, then those bad people of the city would steal this, this treasure. So the, the orphan boys will, will lose their treasure. But when Al-Khadr alayhi salam built this, this wall again, he built it in a way that it will be good enough for uh, the, the two orphan boys to get older and then to get out their treasure. So doing this, Al-Khadr alayhi salam knew how to pay back those bad people of this place, of this town, because he did not allow them to steal this treasure. وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا And their father was righteous. He was a good person. Now, look at this message. وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا This indicates that a righteous person's offspring will be taking care because of the good deeds of their fathers. And you always hear it. The, the uh, father was a good person. Allah saved his children. The grandfather was a good person. He saved his offsprings. And the word Abu Huma in the tafsir might be up to the seventh grand-grand-grandfather or grand-grandmother. So Abu Huma wa kana Abu Huma saliha. The father was righteous and this is a message for us. We have to be righteous so that Allah will take care of our kids. We have to, to, to plant the seeds of goodness in our kids so that they will be brought up with goodness in their heart, with goodness in their mind, with, with goodness in their life. So they will be able, Allah will show them the right way to differentiate between what's right and what's wrong. So they can choose the best. Of course, this is with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَرَادَ رَبُّكَ أَنْ يَبْلُغَا أَشُدَّهُمَا so, your Lord intended that they should attain their age of full strength. And take out their treasure. Now, let's think of the father, the father now, the good father, the righteous father. He built the wall in a way that it will be good enough for a period of time that their, his children, his children will grow up until they reach the age and then get their treasure. Now, who taught him how much uh, of uh, clay he should add, how much of water he should add, how much strength the wall should have? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَبْلُغَا أَشُدَّهُمَا 
when does someone reach the age? When he is able to produce, to give the same thing as himself. When he is able to get married and to give a child at that time, at that age, we will say that he he got the age. Now, if you take a watermelon and you break it, so it might be either red and delicious and uh, very sweet, or it might be um, yellowish or any other color that's not so so ripe and it will not taste good. When will it be good and tasty, red? It will be like this when it is fully grown that the seeds inside are able to, to give more than what you are eating. So you broke one, well, you are eating one watermelon, but Imagine how many seeds are inside and each can produce watermelons. So this is when we say وَكَانَ يَبْلُغَ أَشُدَّهُمَا So why did, did I do that? رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكْ That was a mercy of your Lord. وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي And I did not do that. I did not do, I did not uh, damage this the ship. I did not kill the boy. I did not fix the wall. Just from my own, uh, um, from my own knowledge that I wanted to do that. No. وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي ذَلِكَ تَأْوِيلُ مَا لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ عَلَيْهِ صَبْرًا So this is the reason why you could not, this is the interpretation that I just gave you of those things you could not be patient with. And this is what Allah wanted me to do. Now, if you look at uh, the words, arada, araddu, Arada and Aradu, he, he talked about the bad things, Sayyidina al-Khadr, and he said, I did that. But he talked about the khair, that it belonged to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I just mentioned, this is out of politeness. So, uh, this was the story of Sayyidina al-Khadir with Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. And we all know that, I, I, I mentioned this last time, that <clears throat> this whole journey happened because Sayyidina al-Khadir was asked, who is the most knowledgeable person? And he immediately said, I am. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam that you are not the most knowledgeable. There is one person who is more knowledgeable than you. Sayyidina Musa wanted to know more and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show him the way to go and reach and meet this uh, knowledgeable person and also to tell, to learn from him. So the whole story here indicates that the importance of seeking knowledge. When we know that there is some knowledge that we don't know and there is a lot that we don't know, then we have to seek for it especially when it is sacred knowledge, when it is uh, knowledge about our religion. We have to learn about the fiqh of, of our religion. We have to learn about uh, everything that is important for us to do our daily 
daily to 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 live our daily life correctly righteously we have to learn we have to seek this knowledge and the more we learn the more we find ourselves how ignorant we are the more we learn the more we see that there is a lot that we don't know that we have to learn and the, the, there is a special pleasure in seeking knowledge when when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants his servants to be closer to him then he makes them ulama and it's mentioned in the quran inna yakhsha allah min ibadihi al-ulama those who fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the knowledgeable people so if you want to get closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get more knowledge learn about the quran learn how to read the quran correctly if you know how to read the quran correctly memorize it don't say it's difficult just have the intention and allah will help if you come to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala walking he comes to you running remember this just have the intention and start the first step and you will get what you want so learn about the quran get connected to the quran try to understand the meanings of the ayat of the quran you will find it way more enjoyable to to read the quran when you understand it than when you do not and always remember whatever you do to learn the quran even if it is hard on you then allah will double the reward for you and this is what sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says alladhi yaqra al quran wa huwa mahir fihi falahu ajr wal ladhi yaqra al quran wa huwa yuta'ti'u fihi falahu ajran a person who reads the quran fluently will have a reward but the person who reads the quran and he struggles and he pays more attention he pays more effort and he and it's not easy for him to do that and he still does that he will have double the reward gets connected to the quran this is the secret for a happy life it is it is a complete system for our life it organizes our life it it gives our life special taste when we follow the rules of the quran so the point is here we have to seek knowledge we have to learn when we know that there is a halaqa of dhikr it's our benefit <laughs> to attend this halqa the angels the angels will be surrounding this halqa the, the group of dhikr will be surrounded by angels and they they will mention your name up with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who sit in a group of dhikr whether they are remembering allah learning about quran learning about the prophet learning about the companions those people are called friends for the sake of allah and they will be on pulpits of nur on, on pulpits of uh, uh, happiness in the day after and they will ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya allah we used to to meet with this person we don't see him with us and allah would say go get him wherever he is and and let him be with you 
Those are ikhwanan ala sururin mutaqabilin. Those are the brothers and sisters for on on beds that are next to each other, that are facing each other. So Sayyidina al-Khadr said to Sayyidina Musa alayhi uh, salam, they were talking about knowledge. And then there was a bird who came to the sea and he drank a little bit, a, a small drop of water. And Sayyidina al-Khadr said to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, ma ilmi wa ilmuka fi jambi ilmi Allah illa kama naqara hadha al-usfur min al-bahr. My knowledge, all I know, wa ilmuka, and all you know, in comparison to what Allah's knowledge is, is the amount of the small drop of water that this birdie just drank of this ocean, of this sea. We have to seek knowledge to be of the righteous people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most, inshallah. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. We move on and to another story, which is the story of Dhul Qarnayn. What is this story? Wayasalunaka. This, this, the next story starts with وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ And they ask you. And Allah here is talking to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Now let's stop at this word <clears throat> and look at the questions that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked in the Qur'an. The word su'ila or yas'al was or sa'ala. So from questioning, the question was asked to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 16 times in the Quran. 16 times. One of them was in the past tense. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ if they ask you about me, I am close. And the others are in the present tense. يسألونك عن الأهلة يسألونك ماذا ينفقون يسألونك عن الشهر الحرام قتال فيه يسألونك عن الخمر والميسر يسألونك عن اليتامى يسألونك ماذا أحل لهم يسألونك عن الساعة So many times they asked Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم about the hour يسألونك عن الأنثال يسألونك عن الروح يسألونك عن الجبال So they asked Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم 16 different questions Some of them about about uh, what what they would spend uh, about the sacred uh, months do they fight in it uh, about uh, wine about gambling uh, about the orphans about the hour which was asked so many times uh, about the al uh, anthal um, the, the uh, what they gain in in uh, about the booties. Is, uh, they, they asked about uh, the ruh, the soul, the, the mountains. Each one of these questions was answered differently. Fifteen of these questions were answered by the, uh, by the word qul. They started, the answer started with the word qul. But one of these questions were, was answered without the word qul. The word qul means say. So one of these questions, If they ask you about me, I am close. So there is no qul. But 
Let's have another example for the the the, uh, the, the questions that are answered with قل. ويسألونك عن الجبال فقل ينسفها ربي نسفا. So, فقل. Say. When they ask you about the mountains, say this. When they ask you about the orphans, say this. What's the difference? When they ask you about me, about Allah, don't say anything. I am going to answer them. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I'm close to them. They just need to understand this. They just need to make their dua, and I will answer their dua. But for all other things, قُلْ And some of these ayahs say uh, uh, also does not only start with قُلْ, it starts with فَقُلْ So if you are asked, then say. So this is the questions in the Quran. Now, they asked him, we know that uh, Quraysh wanted to know if Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is a prophet or not. So they asked the uh, Jews, the, the scholars of the Jews in Medina, how can we know that? And they uh, they told him, ask him about the, uh, the young men of the cave. Asked him, ask him about the man who traveled extensively throughout the earth, and ask him about the ruh. If he answers these three questions, then he is a prophet. So when they asked him about the Qarnain, Allah gave him the answer. And, and we know that he did not answer Quraysh when they asked him because he didn't have the knowledge. So he waited until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the knowledge to him. So they are asking you about Dhul Qarnayn. Who is Dhul Qarnayn? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give us a name of this person, the one who travels extensively throughout the earth. So this means that it is not specified to a certain person. It might be any person because he is not given a name. Whereas when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story of Maryam alayha salam, he mentioned her name, Mary. Maryam, he mentioned her name. He mentioned the name of her father. He mentioned the, the, her story. And the reason he mentioned this, her name and her father, and he, it, it was very specific because what happened to her will not happen to anyone else. It's specifically for her. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا امْرَأَةَ نُوحٍ وَامْرَأَةَ لُوطٍ كَانَتَا تَحْتَ عَبْدَيْنِ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا صَالِحَيْنِ فَخَانَتَاهُمَا Allah presents an example of those who disbelieved. The wife, the wife of Nuh alayhi salam and the wife of Lut alayhi salam. We know Nuh and Lut were, were messengers. They were under two of our righteous servants, but they betrayed them. So those prophets did not avail them at all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we know the name? No. Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mention the name of the wife of Nuh alayhi salam or the wife of Lut alayhi salam? No. It can be any wife who objects her husband. It can be any wife who objects the message. It can be any wife. It can be any person. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Sayyidina Zayd in the Quran, he mentioned him by name and he is the only companion who was, whose name was mentioned in the Quran. So we have the name. And this incident is about Zayd himself only. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention the name. So they asked Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, about the story, about the time, what happened. So was he named Dhul Qarnayn because he had a, a crown and his crown had two horns? Or because he, 
he got he traveled so to the east until he got into the sunset uh, sunrise uh, area or to the uh, west and and he got to the sunset area some people say he is alexander the great but that's not possible because the ayahs talk about a righteous person in San Mu'min, a believer, and Alexander the Great was not a believer. He was the uh, the student of Aristotle, the uh, philosopher. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made it general. Why? Because this is what the any ruler who is, who is who has the power of overcoming pe of uh, of ruling people he has certain descriptions that he should fall fall into so don't ask about the name if allah wants us to know the name he would have mentioned it so what happens qul sa'atlu alaykum min dhikra when they ask you about the qarnain say i shall say, recite to you something that is mentioned in the quran and we know that's mentioned in the Quran from the word dhikra. Dhikra means a story that was mentioned in the Quran and that it will be preserved until the day after. So here is uh, this story that men that's mentioned in the Quran. This story indicates and tells us that every good thing is going to last Till the day of judgment. So inshallah we will be stopping here and next time we will go in, we will uh, look in at the story of Dhul Qarnayn. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العرش عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته